only an elite group of chefs holds two Michelin stars. Michel Roux Jr. is one of them. So Marche to Saint-Jacques au pass now. Now he and Master Chef Judge Greg Wallace are on the hunt for Britain's next culinary superstar. A professional with the talent to cut it in the world's top kitchens. Perfect. It's the semi-finals. These six professionals are some of the best chefs in the country. And they've beaten off stiff competition to get this far. Now they're to compete in pairs. Each pair will go head to head in some of the UK's Michelin starred restaurants. Although we're dealing with professional chefs, I guarantee that they are in for a shock. This, for them, is going to be a revelation. Now, two London-based sous chefs, 30-year-old Kim and 25-year-old Ollie, will battle it out for their place in the final. Now it's head-to-head. -head. Obviously, there's more nerves. I need to absolutely smash it today. To get through to the final, like, it'd be a dream. I really want to do great in this competition. And I want to go to the final and win. For me, it is about getting better as a chef and just coming out on, on top, really. Only one of them can become a finalist. Ollie and Kim are heading to Perthshire, home to Scotland's only two Michelin star restaurant, Andrew Fairley at Glen Eagles. Well, I've been cooking since I was 15 years old, um, so I've been a chef for a long time now. And as soon as I saw the kitchen in operation, I knew, you know, that's what I was going to be, and been there ever since. Chef patron Andrew Fairley became the first winner of the prestigious Rue Scholarship. He went on to train under legendary chef Michel Gerard in Gascony. I think to be a great chef, I think you have to love it. I think you genuinely have to love it. In this industry, there is no fast track, really. Um, you have to put the hours in, you have to learn your craft, you have to work hard. Andrew opened his Glen Eagles restaurant in 2003, earning his first star after just one year. The second followed in 2006. With today, there is no room for mistake as far as I want to go in there and prove myself. But I'm so nervous about what could go wrong. Um, you know, I don't want to have a, a bad service, so... <laughs> I'm really nervous, yeah. This opportunity today, I feel so privileged, you know, to cook someone else's dishes at two Michelin star restaurant. There's definitely a lot of pressure. This is his food, his standards, so I need to do it justice. Andrew is a chef at the top of his game. His food is precise and beautiful. Our food and style and presentation is very clean, but the detail that goes into it is is hugely important and because it is so simple in presentation the slightest little thing that goes wrong with it you will notice and if it's not right you know it gets sent straight back in a two michelin starred restaurant no mistakes are tolerated whatsoever this is a huge step for ollie and kim kim nice to meet you Holly, nice to meet you. I don't know how much experience you've had at uh, this level before. We've got 54 covers in. There is no second chance in this one, I'm afraid. You are right into the deep end. Best of luck to you, but we need to get a move on because you've got a lot of work to get through. OK? So let's do it. Kim and Holly will each cook one dish from the menu degustation. 
or tasting menu. Many top restaurants feature these multiple course menus to showcase the best of the chef's repertoire. Andrew's degustation costs £125 and features a total of nine courses, comprising two starters, two fish, one pasta, one meat, one cheese, and two puddings. Kim is in charge of the fish course. Orkney scallops accompanied by squat lobster, razor clam, sea vegetables, a potato and seaweed crisp, a square of dashi jelly, and served with a dashi broth. And all we're gonna do is just warm up our seaweed in that. What you need to be really aware of with this dish is that it seconds. You know, your clams, five seconds and then overcooked. Then it's, it's wasted. It's a waste of money and it's a waste of time. All we really want to do with the um, scallop is so the center is just warm and no more. Okay. So what you need to do is to judge that to take it off where it's almost raw in the center, take it off and it will continue to cook. So you can see scallops ready. Okay, so that's your clams just warm. Yep. Your squat lobsters are just, there, yeah. just cooked. So that's ready to plate. So what I do is uh, presentation wise with this dish, really what we're trying to do is, is the sea. It's the seashore. This is one of the dishes that people would come to a two-star restaurant in Scotland for. It's, it's seafood, it's the best of what we got, okay? Yep. So there's a lot of pressure on you for this one. If this one's not right, then it, we can't serve it. Okay. Okay? Yep. And I can't stress enough to you, it's down to the second. Okay. Okay? Yep. I feel pretty confident about the dish. Obviously, there's a lot of um, timings um, that I have to control myself. Uh, but I'm excited, it's fish, I love to cook fish, so I'm, I'm excited about the dish. Ollie is responsible for the degustation's pasta course. Hand-rolled macaroni with girolles and goat's curd. Served with fresh peas, pea puree and shoots, and a chicken jus gras. Bear in mind, once the check's called, you've got five minutes to get this dish up to the hot plate. It's the detailing in this dish that they really need to be aware of. It's the cooking of the pasta, you know, it's the difference between five or ten seconds is the pea overcooked or undercooked. The mushrooms, when do you stop cooking the mushrooms rather than just keep cooking them? Have you cooked the life out of it or does it still smell of the forest? presentation of the pasta dish, there is no set way to plate that dish, but I need to see some personality on the plate, and I think they need to kind of stand back and look at the plate as a picture. They need to have some flair, they need to have a little bit of touch there in order to make that dish kind of stand up and come alive. I don't want something that's so regimented, but it just needs to be light, vibrant. You know, if you see that the mushrooms are overcooked, um, or the goat's car is melted or whatever, you are going to get the plate back and then we're going to have problems. Yes, Chef. Obviously, there's a lot of elements to it that I need to get correct. There's a lot of emphasis on the cooking time. Everything needs to be done spot on. But if I pull all that together, then, yeah, I think I can do it.
We are about to throw them into the deep end of service in a busy two Michelin star restaurant. This is their chance, their chance to impress, to impress us, but also maybe a future employer. Taking a massive risk on letting two people into the kitchen and doing service on their very first day, we would never normally do that. But there's absolutely no mistake and they are going to be under huge stress. So my six covers, six menu degustation. Six scallops degustation, four and a half. Three. Kim's scallops and lobster dish will be the third course to go out. It must be ready on time, so she doesn't delay the chefs after her. Two scallop degustation, wait, please. Three. Wait. Three. Two scallops, how long? Yeah. Uh, seven minutes on two scallops. Three. We've got three minutes on six scallops coming up. Three. 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 OK, Kim, your time's up. How long do you need in the scallops? 30 seconds to the scallops, six okay. scallops. You sure, 30 seconds? 30 seconds. I'll be one minute on scallops. One minute, okay. Yes. Six coming now. Right, hang, on, hang on a sec. Well, same. See this? It's too flat. It just needs to have more life to it. Kevin, it needs to go quicker, huh? Yep. You're not going to get two scallops out in three minutes. Let's give it a realistic time. It's going to be five minutes. Are you happy? Yes, the rules. OK. Right, let's go. It's far too long, though. That Service. There's a three-minute call and it's 12 minutes to go. Yes. Three minutes from now, we need two scallops, two lobster. Wait, so wait. you need to have these scallops up in three minutes because the lobster's coming with them. Yes. Busy, not feeling good right now. Uh, you know, a lot to do and trying to keep up. Time's up. Okay, I've got two lobsters here, Kim, and I'm still waiting on your scallops. Okay, scallops coming up. Okay. Hey. Okay, Kim, that's good. Scallops perfectly cooked. Okay. Okay, plates are clean, ready to go? Yep. Okay, good. Send it. Service. Okay, table one, please. Again, Kim, you're four and a half minutes behind your second time. I'm very frustrated right now. Um, I, I need to get these right, so I need to concentrate a lot more, definitely, and really think about my time so I, I don't get them wrong. Ollie's pasta dish is the next dish of the menu. Six pasta degustation, please. Three, Three six pasta, eight minutes. You've got far too much. Tip that out on a tray, put it back into the pan. Watch the seasoning as well. The, the worst thing that can happen to you is for you to get six pasta sent back at this moment in time. You're, no, you're never going to recover this. Yeah. OK? So take your time, do it properly, yeah. give it up to me properly, and then you've got no trouble. Wait. You need to get serious now here. We shall. Yes. You've got another... Watch the seasoning as well. You're not thinking about it. You're just, you're just throwing handfuls of salt in there. 
Taste, taste that before you give it to me. Pepper yeah, as well. One turn, that's enough. Six pasta coming to the pasta. Hey. Stevie will put the peas on, you start putting the pasta on. Sure. Is that yeah. hot? Come on, guys, we're going to slow the service up here. Right, quick as you can, quick as you can. Step up, step up. Chef. This is fine. If I hadn't tipped that butter out, you imagine what was there. Okay? As well as that, a few more Giro's as well. A few more Giro's, less, but yes. Some are, some are P Giro. That's what we're selling. Okay? Yes, Chef. Right, let's go. Make sure you're ready for the next one, all, yeah? Oui, Chef. Restaurant, table seven, please. I think our confidence is starting to go a little bit. We've got about 35 guests on the board here, and now we can't afford any more slip-ups. Because the restaurant are now starting to feel the pressure as well. They're expecting a dish there in three, four minutes, and it's coming up 12 minutes later. It's not going to work. I think they could be in a bit of trouble in a wee bit. It's going to be tough. Two macaroni degustation, away, please. Three. Three. Two pasta, six minutes. Yeah. And two scallop degustation away, please. Two scallops degustation, five minutes. You take it, six minutes. I want them both together. OK. Wait. Yep. Wait. OK, you've got plenty of time, huh? I think your pasta's too quick, so it's in far too early. Two pasta, two scallops, five minutes. Wait, wait. Okay, good, good. Two pasta, two scallops, two minutes. Okay. Wait. Right, plates are up, huh? Wait. More. Right, be gentle with it. Right, Ollie, let's go. Best one yet. They look nice and bright. There's a bit of height on it. Okay. Service. This is taking too long. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. No, no, no. This one's fine as a composition. It's just. Yeah. That's flat. This is okay. And you, you had plenty of time to do it there. Do you agree? Yeah. This one looks different. Yeah. James will do this too again. Give me two pasta, please. Yeah, it's not a nice feeling to have plates sent back, so I need to sort it out. OK, Ollie, have a quick look at this. OK, two pasta dish. Nice and back, nice and bright, nice and vibrant. Give me them all like that. Wait, chef. Restaurant table, two, please, two pasta. While Ollie struggles, Kim is working on her biggest order yet. I've got eight going right now. <laughs> this is going to be a big test for me to make sure that I can get these up on time. Definitely. She has less than a minute to finish plating up all eight orders. Right, this, this, this needs to go now. Okay, let's go. Table Service. four, please. Sweet. Well done, Kim. Thank you. Hopefully, I'm getting it in the hang of it. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best. So, I mean, hope I'm improving as I go along. 
With the scallop served, Ollie's eight pastas will be the next course to go out to the table. Eight pasta, six minutes. Six minutes or two soon. You need two and a half, three minutes to plate. Pasta coming on the pass now, chef. You need, you need some more Jerome on there. Yeah. James, give me some more Jerome on. Too sweet, please. Appreciate. James, read the Jerome. Appreciate. Okay, so keep an eye on the portions the next time. Hey. Great. Andrew has to step in to help Ollie get the dishes out on time. Stand up, come here. What do you think? It could be better next time. Okay. Yeah, a little bit brighter, yeah. a little bit more, but you need to get your timings right. Yes, sir. Okay, table four, first plates over here, please. Table four. Two scholar degustation away, please. Three. This is your last two of the night. Yes. Let's make them the best you've done, okay? Yep. And be proud of it, all right? Yes, thank you. Okay, let's go. This is the one. With that? Yes. Yeah? It smells of the sea. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> feeling feeling good right now. Uh, yeah, I think I've cracked it. Hopefully. I can say I can crack it. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that he's happy, that he's pleased. Um, you know, because it's all about, you know, making sure it's that, at that standard. And uh, I hope I've done it. Absolutely. The scallops were fantastic. The, the flavours in the dish were really unusual. It gave you a nice um, experience when you put it into your mouth. And it was a lovely dish. The presentation was fantastic. Excellent. I down here quite regularly. Um, and in terms of the dish we've just eaten, um, it was definitely up to the standard of what we would normally have here. Just couldn't find any fault at all. Just lovely. You've got two pastas to go away. It's the last two of the night. Yes, On your own. I want to see two perfect plates. Yes, chef. I want to make this last dish perfect and then at least I've been able to do it at some point over the night. Okay, Ollie, where are we? Two pasta, 30 seconds, chef. Just to open it up slightly. Can I do this one again? You're going round the edge of the plate again, so you want it over the pasta, just not round the outside of the plate. Send it. Send it. Table 15? Table 15. Thank you. Sorry, sir. I found out very hard. Thank you very much. It would be hard. I'd be uh, very surprised if you found it OK? Yeah. Sorry, not everything was a fun time. No, it was good. It was good. Thanks.
I'm just a bit disappointed to obviously I find it very difficult and I'm not happy with everything I sent. The chef wasn't happy with everything I sent, but it was a very hard set. So it was a good opportunity to see this and I enjoyed it, but I'm just disappointed that I didn't perform a bit good. I'm married to a pea farmer, so I eat a lot of peas at home. But these are exceptionally good. Lovely pea puree, which I sometimes do at home, but maybe not as good as this. Really delicious. And thanks to the chef. Lovely fresh peas, the puree, the pasta, which I love, and the girol mushrooms. It was a marriage made in heaven. The presentation was just super, and for us, I didn't see any difference between any other meal I've had at Andrew Fairley's and meal I've had tonight. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much. I know that was a that was a tough task, Kim. You got it. By the end, you were you were cooking a storm. You got the timings right. Thank you. Fortunately, um, well, your head went down a wee bit at the end, which you shouldn't have done. Uh, but I think it affected your cooking a little bit at the end. You know, your plating and things like that, you were just a little bit too, a little bit too tense. But it was a pleasure to have you both with us. And I'd give either one of you a job. OK, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, well done. The next morning, Kim and Ollie return to compete once more. They will both have to recreate one of Andrew's signature dishes. Cured mackerel served with crab claw meat on cumin and seaweed paste, accompanied by a crab and sea cucumber jelly balutine. With this dish, it's very important I do well. Uh, I don't have a good service, so I need to nail this dish and get it right for the chef. Trying to handle the pressure as much as I can. I mean, this is a, something I've never done before, so it's, it's new to me. And, I'm, you know, again, I've got to give it my all and just hope for the best. They're going to have to make a very, very fine sheet of cucumber jelly. They're going to have to sweet cure some mackerel. I'm looking for a very fine, precise cutting of that. I don't want them to push a knife through the fish and break it up. They're going to have to cook some crab. Is it undercooked? Is it overcooked? That has to be seasoned with a little bit of lime and a little bit of almond oil. Again, the seasoning on that is very delicate. And then we've got a kind of dried seaweed dressing that we make, which is seasoned with cumin. Now, cumin is a very difficult spice to use. Some people love it, and some people hate it. If they put too much cumin, that is going to overpower the whole dish. The detailing in the presentation has to be so precise that it has a very Japanese look to it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see their interpretation of it and their detailing of how it's going to be presented. I just feel that the sauce doesn't look like a sauce. I don't know if it's right or not. They're following a recipe, but I don't think it looks right. Yeah, swipe it across the plate. Mm. Yeah, I just want to replate that.
came with first thing timing. Um, I know we talked about it before, but you know, it's quite a few minutes late. Yes, I had to replate. Timing, you need to um, work on that a little bit. Yep. You can sitting around waiting for, for something to eat. Um, presentation, it's not how I would have presented it. It's a little bit raggy in places. It's a bit rough, my first impression yeah. of, the, of the dish. Kim, certain bits of the dish I think you've done very well. I think you've got the balance between the taste of the, the seaweed and the cumin spot on. The marinated mackerel, for me, I would have just given it maybe a little bit longer, probably a little bit more sweetness to it would have been better. Okay. The tartare and seasoned, it was it was very, very good. The, the cucumber, I think it probably needed a little bit more cucumber, just if you'd given the jelly just another millimetre or so. Thicker, okay. Thank you very much. It was a great effort. Well done. Thank you. Again, push for time, and again, it was the presentation. Ah, oh, so it got me on again. I knew I was running out of time to present, and for me, I put it on the plate, and I knew if I had more time, I could have done a lot better. Thank you, Ollie. Presentation it looks good. The jelly looks um, nice and thin. I suppose it all comes down to the to the taste. It's actually really good. Thank you. Seasoning you've got spot on. I'm really impressed. I think it's a very difficult dish to get right in terms of seasoning and combination of flavours. The cumin's not overpowering, you can still taste, there's a nice iodine taste of the seaweed. The detailing in it with the, the fish is all, it's nicely sliced, it's not broken up. I think you've done really well there. I think you should be very, very pleased with yourself. Thank you. It's a dish that we would, we would gladly put out in the restaurant. Congratulations. It means so much. It was his dish and I've just served him his dish and he said I'd knock the flavours on the head. But also as redemption for service last night, I think, yeah, it's a good feeling, very happy feeling. I feel accomplished now. Overall, Kim, she came in very confident. She kind of hit the wall a little bit quite early on, but she picked herself up. Had a great service, actually, by the end of the night. She, she was really strong. The signature dish, she let herself down badly with presentation, but she'd obviously got a great palate. Um, she's a great young cook. She, I mean, she, could be a, she could be a very good, very good chef, Kim. To come here and to be working in a two Michelin star restaurant, um, it's been amazing. I think taking away from this experience, the next challenge that I have I'm really going to push myself to make sure everything is perfect. Ollie, I think he's gone through a range of emotions. He was very nervous when he first arrived. In service, he didn't really get off to a good start. And then when things started to go wrong for him, Ollie buckled a little bit. And I think he was disappointed in himself there. But I think Ollie's taken that, that lesson on board because for the mackerel dish, he really did. The, the balance of flavours and the seasoning there, it was perfect. Um, and he's got the potential to be a, a great young chef, Ollie. Yeah, I would have him. I would have him in the kitchen any day. After service, I was a bit let down, upset with myself. But after getting that dish absolutely perfect in flavour, no, I'm, I'm much happier. I'm going away with the confidence again and I'm happy. Now, Ollie and
and Kim must take everything they've learned back to the Master Chef kitchen. If I go home today, then it'll definitely hurt inside because, you know, a lot of heart and passion has gone into this, so I will be very upset. This is the last day to get to the final. I'm, I'm very nervous this morning. There's been some sleepless nights. I am tired, but I'm confident in myself. I do think I can cook well. I'm proud of myself for getting this far, but I don't want to let go now. I want to go to that final. I want to see that you have been inspired by your experience in a two Michelin starred restaurant. You have seen what it takes. Now's the time to prove that you want that place in the final, that you deserve it, that you are even good enough to win it. You are so close now to a place in the final three. Two courses in an hour and 45 minutes. Let's go. Since it going to Andrew Fowley, I'm pushing more than I ever have in this competition. I think I have to. You have to at this stage. You know, if I cook my dishes to the highest standard I possibly can today in that kitchen, then whatever happens, I can walk out of here with my head held high. Yeah, I want to do myself proud, that's what I'm here for. Ollie is making a main course of fillet of Dover sole cooked menier, served on a mussel and clam ragout, with courgette ribbons, Swiss chard, and a caviar cream. Cream sauce with sole works very well, but caviar and seafood is going to have to have a little bit of acidity in there, a good squeeze of lemon, just to balance it out and give it that wonderful fragrant flavour that it should have. Ollie's going to cook the sole meunier, which means in lots of butter. There is a certain art to cooking fish on the bone, just to get it to that right doneness so that it's pink and just comes away from the bone. That is a true, true craft. I don't want to see this messed up. Ollie's dessert is an iced raspberry souffle served with a raspberry coulis, mint jelly, and a cinnamon straw. Ollie's dessert is, is quite unusual. He's got an iced souffle. I've never had an iced souffle. An iced souffle is meringue folded into cream and a raspberry coulis, then frozen. An ice souffle should never be crystallised or grainy. It should always be soft and smooth, lovely and melting on the mouth, as you would expect with a hot souffle. What, if anything, have you taken back from your stint up with Andrew there? Just the standard is something completely different to what I'm doing now, and it's amazing. Everything was so pristine, refined and perfect. So hopefully taking a lot from there that I can put into my own cooking. And are you going to be achieving that standard today? Yeah, that's a level expected now in this competition, and that's what I need to do to perform for you today. Hmm. Who are you doing this for? I'm doing this for me, to benefit me, my career. I enjoy cooking to show you what I can do. It's for me. It's given me a great confidence boost. If you get through to the final, what's, what's, what's possible? Well, if I get through to the final, I'd hope to think I could win the competition. To get to the final is the final three. And from there, who knows what it could do to my career. What is your dream, Ollie? My dream one day is to own my own restaurant with my girlfriend who runs front of house, so it'll be a joint effort. Uh, preferably fish, I love cooking fish, seafood, by the sea, by a lake, that's the dream. Fresh fish every day. She understands the business, but how hard have you been to live with since MasterChef started? <laughs> I've been quite stressed, nervous, sleepless nights, so I think I've caused her a bit of sleepless nights herself. Will she be proud of you? Uh, she already is proud of me, so, yeah, she, she will be. If I was to get to the final and win, She'd be over the moon for me. You're halfway. 
Halfway, people. For my next two dishes, I have given myself a lot to do. I'm challenging myself to push myself further and just to get better. If I don't get this right today, then I would have really let myself down. I want to be here to go into the final and I need to get it right. Kim is making butter roasted halibut on a bed of coriander linguine, served with a carrot and lobster roll, deep fried carrot ribbons, and a passion fruit sauce. Kim has got a heck of a lot of work to do. She's making fresh pasta with coriander, that lobster roll, and then that passion fruit sauce. The problem using passion fruit is that it has an intense flowery flavor. I just hope Kim understands that you can't put too much of the passion fruit because it will completely kill the beautiful, delicate flavor of the halibut. Her dessert is a fresh raspberry praline cream tart, served with raspberry sorbet and chocolate ganache. To achieve greatness with such a simple dessert, you have to do the processes properly. The right kind of ganache, quite bitter, just the right amount of praline, a raspberry sorbet as well that has got the freshness to liven up that dessert, to make it special. Kim, you have got a lot of work to do. Yes, I do. So staying fairly classical and traditional with the pudding, but dare I say Asian and not the traditional Kim that we're used to seeing with the main course? No, I'm just trying to, you know, experiment a little bit more. I think I need to really show you guys that, that, you know, I'm willing to push myself to, to be here. Mmm, yeah. Me and Michelle fell in love with your food. Why push yourself now? I feel like I need to keep challenging myself because I'll only get better if I keep doing that. So we're just seeing a different facet of Kim. Definitely, yeah. Huge, huge grin on your face today, Kim. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? I'm excited to be here at this stage and obviously I hope my dishes do me justice and put me through to the final. I hope so, absolutely. How much have you put into this? I've put everything into this competition as far as trying to bring out me as a chef. Uh, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm in a competition to win it and that I want to be a great chef eventually and I want to be a head chef. I want to be the next level of me. So I'm here to, to give it my all and prove myself that I can do it. Can you knock it out again today? Can you do us proud? Yes. <laughs> yes. Confidence. Kim, Ollie, OK, this is your last five minutes. Chefs, that's it. Stop, stop. Time's up. Ollie's main course is a fillet of Dover sole cooked menier and served in a muslin clam ragu accompanied by courgette ribbons, Swiss chard, and a caviar cream. The sole has been cooked Meunier on the bone, which I think is the only way it should be cooked. And it's got a beautiful golden sheen to it that looks like perfection. Oh, my word. Look. That sole, just a hint of firmness, but buttery and full of flavour, so soft, and then butteriness in the sauce, but then being taken up, up with little sweet notes of the caviar is, is harmony, is beautiful. I think with Swiss chard and courgette, two very watery vegetables, you're in danger in your mouth of washing out the butter 
washing out the caviar. I had Sol the night I met my wife. He cooked Sol for me again the day I proposed to her. <laughs> that tastes as good as those two dates. The chard and the little twirls of courgette are all right, nothing special. What is special is the ragu of clam and mussel. You've got the depth of flavour of the seafood, which is beautifully cooked, beautifully seasoned, and then you've got the odd crunch from the crunchy bread. Very, very good. The star Dover sole, absolutely cooked, bang on, beautifully. And the caviar sauce. Oh, delicious. Delicious. Quite divine. If you can cook fish that well, my word, you have got a great future. Thank you. Ollie's dessert is an iced raspberry souffle served with a cinnamon straw, raspberry coulis, and cubes of mint jelly. Ollie, this looks really good. I, I like it as far as iced souffles go. It certainly is proud of the mold. It looks like a hot souffle. Oh, yeah, brother. Sharp raspberry, soft, cold, and then the lovely fresh mint flavour that comes from that jelly, which dissolves slightly slower than the raspberry ice souffle. I think that's lovely. Oh, that's lovely. I think it's a real trick to be sweet and sticky and still clean and fresh at the same time. Very good. Mint jelly is good. The ice souffle is sweet, sharp, creamy, but most importantly, it's set without being hard. It's great. An ice souffle like that could be served in most fine dining establishments for sure. Thank you. Kim has made butter roasted halibut on a bed of coriander linguine served with a carrot and lobster roll, deep-fried carrot ribbons, and a passion fruit beurre blanc. Beautiful presentation, very neat, precise, clean lines, uh, and, and joyous colours. Um, I would have liked maybe a little bit of oil on top of the lobster to give it shine, to make it glisten. Uh, just little things like that yeah. make a difference. Mm. It's delicious. It's got a lovely freshness to it. A little bite and kick from the chilli. Very good cooking as well. The lobster is not overcooked. It's still very tender. Really like that. That's, that's lovely. The pasta is very, very fine, but it's well cooked. It's al dente. You get the flavour of the coriander. And I think works very well with that passion fruit. Um, Belle Blanc works very well. The halibut is very well cooked. And, and I think it does work with that sauce. I just find it a little bit bland, though. It's lacking a pinch more seasoning. And for me, this is two separate dishes. You have the lobster roll, which is, which is great on its own, and I think the, the halibut as well is great on its own. Now, I don't know if it's because you're trying to do too much or you want to show us off different skills, which you certainly are here, um, but it doesn't work as one dish. Nice textures, crisp and clean. Sweetness of the lobster comes right, right at the end. I thought you'd missed it. I got no lobster flavour until the end. This is nice. I'd rather this was more about the lobster. Right, this intrigues me. Mmm. Mmm. I like that. Slight sweetness, slight acidity. Very, very buttery on top of a very, very lovely fish and nicely cooked pasta. Love the halibut, not sure lobster. Her dessert is a fresh raspberry praline cream tart served with raspberry sorbet and a chocolate ganache. It's 
inventive, modern, looks lovely. Oh, that's delicious. The sorbet packs a real punch of raspberry and is fresh, zingy, vibrant. <laughs> the ganache is bitter, slightly bitter, but has a different texture to your praline mousse. It's more like a fudge. And then you've got that praline base. It's, it's indulgent yet light. And, I'm, and you could polish that off quite easily. A beautiful creation. Not only beautiful, but delicious. Love it. Oh, well. Lovely, almost sharp, very sweet, very strong raspberry flavour, which is beautiful. The other little treats that come in are chocolate or little hints of sharp lemon, which is lovely. And I love the buttery base. Very, very nice indeed. Great food, guys. We've got to decide which of you goes through to the final three. You know, this is not going to be easy. Thank you very much. Off you go. This is a real tough one, Greg, because we've got two great chefs and chefs that, that I think are very equal in not only their talent, but also, strangely enough, their style. I loved Ollie's fish and the fact that he cooked his sole meunier with lots and lots of foaming butter on the bone. And that is so difficult to achieve perfection. But he did a true, true craftsman could not have done better. You've cooked soul for me. That was as good as soul you've cooked for me. I mean, that was beautiful. His beurre blanc had been enriched with the cooking juices of the mussels and clams, which gave it extra oomph. And then, of course, he added caviar and a squeeze of lemon. It was delicious, the perfect sauce for that kind of dish. But the Swiss chard leaf was far too strong and watery uh, and, and washed away the lovely, delicate flavour of the sole. Ollie's dessert. I loved it because it just looked like an enormous pink parfait and actually it was delicious. Absolutely delicious. An ice souffle is never easy to get right, but his was bang on. Nice food. He does nice food. Kim's, oh, I wasn't sure of that, of that lobster roll, although I really did like the passion fruit beurre blanc with Kim's halibut. I, I thought that was, that was great. The lobster roll for me, I really enjoyed. I loved the depth of flavour there. I loved the crunch from the celery and the kick from the chilli. It worked for me, but it was definitely two separate dishes on a plate, which, which was wrong. Her dessert, a good mixture of flavours. I absolutely adored it. It was delicious. It was a play on texture and on taste. And it looked great. I thought it looked beautiful. How do we split these two? There's a place in the final at stake and I want to be in it. If I was to go home, I'd be a bit upset because I've been in the competition for such a long time. I really want to make it to the final. I'm putting so much of my energy into this competition. I'm tired. I am tired. I've hardly slept, but it would mean so much to keep my place in this competition now. Just one step away from the final, I, I don't really want to throw it away now. I'd love to be in that final. The quality of cooking that we've had in this semi-final has been unbelievable. This is really, really hard on whoever has to leave today. It, it's it's, it's gut-wrenching, it's, it's tough. But we have to make that decision. What should we do? They've got to be able to win the competition.
That was unbelievably close. You two have got the most amazing future in front of you. Only room for one of you in the finals. Our finalist is... Ollie. Kim, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm disappointed, of course. I didn't make it to the final, but I mean, I can say that I'm proud of where I've, where I've come to in this competition. And, you know, again, I, for me, I'll just keep pushing myself further in my career in every way I can. So that's what I'm going to do. Wow. I was so nervous coming in, and now, wow, what a feeling. The, the smile on my face, I can't wipe it off. I'm so happy. Ollie has got so much going for him. He is our finalist. He understands taste. He has got the craftsmanship. Wow, today he impressed me. For me, as a customer, Ollie's ability to capture and hold flavour on the plate is second to none. <sighs> oh, it means so much just to get to the final, to be recognised for what I'm doing and my food appreciated, my dishes. Yeah, I'm in the final three. I've got a chance of winning this competition now. Wow. Ollie will join Ash in the finals. Next time, Steve and Claire are the last pair to battle it out in the fight to join them. This is definitely going to be a baptism of fire for Claire and Steve. Come on, Claire, let's go. Pick up the pace. That's undercooked. That's undercooked. I can't muck up again, man. That doesn't happen here, Steve. This is your food for one place in the final three. We are going to get exceptional cooking today, that is for sure. I think you have 100% completely nailed it. Delicious. Delicious. You are a talent, you are an intriguing talent. That's the kind of stuff that great chefs are made of. We are going to send home a future Michelin-starred chef. You realise that, don't you?